It's a song about Jesus, how wonderful he is. Good morning and welcome to Home Church Online here at New Life Christian Centre, Christie's Beach in South Australia. My name's Greg, I'm pastor here, and I trust you're going to get blessed as we worship God together today. Let's open in prayer. Father, we thank you for your presence here and also in the lounge rooms and places where people are watching. Father, I thank you for your blessing upon them in Jesus' name. Be glorified through our time together, and God, I just thank you for the working of your Holy Spirit in our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, every week in our church, we give people opportunity to worship God with their giving. It's a part of serving and honoring God with our lives. And I just love that verse of scripture in John 3.16, where it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, so that whoever would believe on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. How wonderful that God has given us his all. He gave us his Son to die in our place, to take our sin upon himself, to make it possible for us to be forgiven our sins and reconciled to him through the sacrifice that Jesus 
made on the cross. He gave his all for us. And as we give today, it's such a great honor to give to God. And I trust that as you give, you'll give in faith. Um, if you're wanting to give online, just go to our webpage. You'll see the giving page there and uh, you'll see all the details. Just uh, avail yourself of that. But as we give today, let's really believe that... Um, as we sow, there's going to be a reaping. As we give, there's going to be a receiving because they are the promises of God. But let's give because we're reflecting the Father heart of God, who is a giver. Amen. Father, we thank you for your blessing upon our giving today. Lord, we just thank you for the privilege of giving. We thank you that you've given us everything to us through Jesus. You gave us yourself. And Lord, we praise you for that. And Father, I just pray you bless the givers today, that they would experience your provision and your abundant supply in their lives as they sow that they would be a reaping as they give there would be a receiving in jesus mighty name amen praise god well we're going to come around the table of communion if you haven't you got your um, communion gear go and grab that and come back and enjoy communion together and also we have our normal cyc talk so god bless you good morning my friend refers to jesus as the master reminder and that's good because we are doubtful and forgetful no matter how often Jesus met the needs of the people who came to him when he was here on earth his first disciples feared they would somehow be left in need after witnessing miracles they failed to understand the greater meaning the Lord wanted them to remember on a journey across the Sea of Galilee, the disciples realised they had forgotten to bring bread and were talking about it. Jesus asked them, Do you still not see or understand? Are your hearts hardened? Do you have eyes but fail to see and ears but fail to hear? And don't you remember? Then he reminded them that when he fed 5,000 people with five loaves, the disciples had collected 12 basketfuls of leftover pieces. And when he fed 4,000 with seven loaves, they filled seven baskets with leftovers. Then he said to them, Do you still not understand? The Lord's miraculous provision for people's physical needs pointed to the greater truth, that he was the bread of life and that his body would be broken for them and for us. Every time we eat the bread and drink the cup during the Lord's Supper, we are reminded of our Lord's great love and provision for us. Communion is the Lord's reminder to us of his love and his provision. Let's pray. We thank you, Lord, for your great love, for your great provision. We thank you for the sacrifice of Jesus. And so now we take and we eat in remembrance of you. And we thank you in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, for your great love for us. And we pray that you will bless us to be a blessing in the week ahead. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, everyone. Today I would like to speak about loving others. What if I told you love is not a feeling, but a decision? Jesus commands us to love, but sometimes we don't always feel the love. Instead, we need to make the decision to love others, because honestly, it isn't always easy. If everyone chooses to love instead of waiting for the feeling, the world would be a happier and safer place. 1 Peter 4.8 Above all, love each other deeply, because love covers over a multitude of sin. Love covers sin. Everyone can sin. Your brother, your sister, your parent, your teacher, your friend. But that doesn't mean they are a bad person. Show them love. Show them kindness. And most importantly, forgive them. Because love covers sin. 1 Corinthians 13.4 Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. God tells us how to love if we really don't know. By tolerating delays, problems, 
or suffering without becoming annoyed or anxious. We are being patient, which is love. By being friendly, generous and considerate, we are showing kindness, which is love. By being kind, humble and generous, we are showing love. Today, I want you to remember these three things. One, Jesus loves all people, every gender, every race, every age, all of us. Two, we need to love all people. And three, God tells us how to love. There are many verses in which God tells us how to love. For example, 1 Corinthians 13, 6 to 7. Let's pray. Dear God, help us to love like you do. Teach us how to love with kindness, sincerity, generosity and patience. Teach us how to love without boasting, fear, envy or pride. And show us how to love our enemies. Lord, thank you for the people in our lives who love us like you do. In Jesus' name, Amen. We're going to come around the Word of God now, and just before we do, let me mention that if you check out our website, you'll see a news and events page that tells you everything that's coming up in the life of the church. Uh, these are really difficult times in which we live, where many things in the life of the church, life of the church, have gone on hold. But we're starting to get things back together. If you want to come to our Sunday services, uh, 10 a.m. and 5:30 p.m. on Sundays, then you'll need to let us know if you're not a regular member, uh, so that we can um, plan for the, your coming and. Uh, fulfill the restrictions and the requirements uh, placed upon us with, within this COVID period. So, um, yeah, just check out our webpage and you'll see what's happening over these coming uh, weeks and months and celebrate church life together. Um, we're going to come around the Word and uh, this is a message that I preached last week in our church, uh, last month in our church, and I just want to bring it today. I really believe it will bless your heart. And it's uh, focusing on prayer, prayer. And the title of my message is, The Battle is Spiritual, So Pray. The Battle is Spiritual, So Pray. And we come to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, in other words, against people, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Another translation says, We're not fighting against flesh and blood enemies but against evil rulers, authorities of this unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against the evil spirits in the heavenly places. You know, the Bible actually very clearly reveals the presence of evil spirits in the spiritual realm, and that these evil spirits actually do affect the visible realm. When we look at Jesus' own ministry, we see him confronting demonic forces in people, casting out demons, delivering people from the work of evil spirits. Of course, that doesn't sit well with our Western culture today because we're very scientific in our approach, but we cannot deny what the Bible teaches us and also what is really to, to Christians clearly evident in the world, that there are malevolent forces at work uh, that wreak havoc amongst humanity. The Bible says that there is a personal devil and that he is the prince of the power of the air. That's one descriptive way of describing the devil. The prince of the power of the air, John 12, 31 says, the ruler of this present world. There is a, a degree of authority in a sense, a spiritual authority that Satan has over the world's systems in the age in which we live. The word uh, world in the Strong's Concordance is the Greek word cosmos, which literally means something ordered or an ordered system or the world. And so we see that Satan has incredible influence over the systems of this world. And do you ever wonder why, no matter how hard we try, there seems to be a lot of chaos in the world, a lot of animosity. Why is it that we've got enough nuclear weapons to wipe out the whole planet? Why cannot countries get on? Why is there so much evil uh, present in our world today? Well, the Bible is very clear that um, there is an evil force at work. Of course, that doesn't excuse humans from our own sinfulness, but nevertheless, underlying that or behind that, there is often demonic forces at work. The good news is, is that one day the devil will be cast out. It says that very clearly in John chapter 12, verse 31. So the demons that are in the world, the, those, those evil spirits, the Bible calls them fallen angels, and the devil are actually not rivals to God. They're not 
equals to God. So we might think of God and the devil. No, it's kind of God and the devil because the devil was a created being. So not rivals and not equals to God, nor does the devil's power as ruler of this current world or system diminish the lordship of our God. The devil's dominion is limited, it is temporary, but it is deadly. In the sinful chaos of this current age, the devil, like a roaring lion, as it says in 1 Peter 5 verse 8, seeks to kill, steal and to destroy, John 10 verse 10. To devastate and devour humanity, 1 Peter 5 verse 8. And in contrast, Jesus has come to bring deliverance to those held under the power of the evil one, to bring salvation, freedom and eternal life. Those in Christ have been delivered from the dominion of Satan and brought into the kingdom of the Son of God. Hallelujah. Colossians 1 13 says that. Let me read that again. Christ has delivered us out of the dominion of Satan and brought us into the kingdom of Jesus. I love that because Satan has a dominion, but Jesus is the king. Hallelujah. And Jesus came not to establish a religion, not to bring just good moral teaching, but to deliver humanity from Satan's power. And as you put your faith and trust in him, when you become a child of God, you are set free from Satan's power and dominion. Hallelujah. He has nothing on you. If you're a child of God, he can tempt, he can pressure, he can try and afflict. Satan has all sorts of schemes reigned against humans and particularly God's people. But nevertheless, we have authority in the name of Jesus to uh, kind of walk over that. The devil is under our feet because the devil is under Jesus' feet. Interestingly, the church has a unique role in this age of spiritual conflict. Really important to understand that. We're all called and commissioned to proclaim the king and his coming kingdom and to continue the work of Jesus by the Holy Spirit to go about doing good and healing all who are oppressed of the devil. That's what Jesus did, healing all who are oppressed of the devil. That's Acts 10, 38, Mark 16, verse 17. In Christ, we are no longer of the world, but we are in the world, as John 17 says. We are Jesus' presence in this world, his body, his ambassadors, his heralds, his hands, his feet, his heart to a lost and dying world world so the church has an important role in overcoming or enforcing the victory over satan in this world today through the ministry that god has given us through the proclamation of the gospel to bring light where there's darkness to bring healing to bring hope the hope of christ and to liberate people from the bondage that they find themselves in under the power of the enemy that brings us back to ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Five times in that one verse, it uses the word against. And I want to ask you today, what are you against? People can be against a lot of things, but for Christians, there's one thing we shouldn't be against, and that's people or a person, because we're not against people. That's not where our battle lies. It's a spiritual battle. We need to guard our hearts, keeping them sweet towards others, especially our brothers and sisters in Christ. We need to guard our hearts against the spirit of offence. You know, today it's interesting that to be offended is almost seen as a human right. You know, oh, everybody's offended about everything. Now, that doesn't mean that there aren't genuine offences that we should call to account. But I think as God's people, we need to be very careful about that spirit of offence. Not allowing it, not allowing it to grip our hearts, to remain in our hearts, to allow grudges and bitterness to remain there because those things are so destructive. Also, unforgiveness is a destructive force and we should not allow that in our hearts. Friends, our battle is not against people. We also need to guard our hearts against devaluing others, even people who have hurt us. Friends, think of how Jesus treated his enemies and you've got to remember that all of us, because of our sin, we're enemies or are enemies to God. We are at enmity with God. But Jesus came and he loved us. Friends, our wrestle is not with people. It's with the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. So if you find your heart against people, check your heart because that's not the right. That's not going to help you. It's not going to help them. So what are we to do? We are to pray. We're going to come to that in a moment. But I just want to talk for a moment about being hurt because offense comes often because we're hurt. We feel offended, 
we, we, we might be experiencing genuine hurt because of what people have done to us. And I want to talk about three levels, levels of hurt and what to do about it. Firstly, there's minor, a minor hurt. Well, we just got to let it go. Let it go, like water on a duck's back. We just got to let it go. So many people get caught up in the minor hurts. Just let it go. It's to a man's glory, the Bible says, to overlook an offence. Then there's mid-level hurts. <laughs> These are more serious that need sorting out a conflict, a difficulty, a challenge with a, another person. In the context of the church, it says, go to your brother and resolve the issue. Matthew chapter 5, verse 23, resolve it before you come and worship. Because we can't allow that offence and that unforgiveness and whatever it is that's gotten between you and your brother and sister to remain there when we come to worship. Because God requires us to forgive and to be reconciled. Jesus died on the cross to reconcile us to God and we are to um, offer that same spirit and heart of reconciliation, that ministry of reconciliation to others. Hallelujah. And then there's major levels of hurt and Whilst the same principles apply, we need to often seek extra support in our pain and our hurt. I'm talking about major abuse and the kinds of things that leave lasting damage to people and in their lives. And of course that takes time, but we still must be determined through the grace of God and through the healing power of the Holy Spirit in our lives and through getting help from brothers and sisters in Christ and counselling or whatever it will take to bring healing and wholeness to our hearts. We must still be determined to forgive those who have sinned against us. Jesus requires that of us. Praise God. So I wanted to talk about that because, um, you know, in our relationships, often we find our hearts against people. But we need to deal with that and ask God to help us to deal with that and to bring his love into their lives as best we can. To be free in our own lives, in our own hearts, from the kind of offence and hurt and bitterness or grudges or whatever it is that... Uh, we're retaining between us and others and seek to be reconciled and seek to bring Christ's love and grace to bear on our relationships. That's what Jesus did for us. That's what he calls us to do for others. So let's come to prayer as um, a way of fighting the spiritual battles that we're up against. Spiritual warfare is real. The devil is real. He seeks to destroy people, relationships, and the result of his work is unhealthy conflict, unresolved conflict, and relationship problems, broken relationships, hatred, and friends, even war. So let's have a look. Ephesians chapter 6, the famous instruction to be strong in Christ and put on the full armor of God. Paul urges the people to pray three times, sorry, five times in three verses. So let's have a look at Ephesians chapter 6. We'll just go there in our Bibles, if you have your Bibles there. Ephesians chapter 6. We'll read verse 18 and through to verse 20. It says, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. Pray also for me that whenever I open my mouth, words may be given me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I'm an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. So he says, pray, 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 pray five times in those three Verses, praise God. So here's some things that we need to prioritize now. Prayers, things we need to focus on and in, in, in the manner in which we are to pray. Firstly, pray first. Pray first, especially when facing sensitive relational issues. Often people go in with guns blazing in relationship conflict when really what they should be doing is to spend time on their knees praying about it and getting the grace of God flowing in their hearts because then you'll be equipped to go and resolve issues and to bring reconciliation. Pray first with whatever you're facing in your life, whatever conflict, whatever difficulty, whatever challenge, whatever you're up against in life, pray first. And I should say pray last and pray in the middle, but especially pray first. Secondly, pray with somebody. Matthew 18, 19 talks about the prayer of agreement where two agree on earth as a touching. Anything that they ask for in prayer, it will be done for them by their Father in heaven. The prayer of agreement is so important. Pray with somebody and you'll release the power of God into that situation. Number three, pray for the person. When you pray for a person, particularly if there's a problem between you and them, your heart will be softened and it's quite probable that their hearts will be softened when you pray for that person. Number four, pray persevering. Pray with perseverance. Jesus said, pray and faint not. Number five, pray in faith. 
Believe. Mark eleven twenty four says, believe that when you pray, believe that you have received it and it shall be yours. Pray in faith that God will respond, that God will help, that God will do something in that situation to bring about his will, to bring about healing and blessing and life. Pray at length. Pray without ceasing, ceasing, 1 Thessalonians 5. I think we don't see the value in spending time in prayer. Go somewhere quiet and spend time in prayer. Sitting with God, you with him, in the word, just reading the Bible, praying, talking, listening, praying in the spirit. I'm going to talk about that next. But praying um, at length is so important. In a rush and go society, we often don't pause long enough to really hear God and to spend time in the, with the kind of prayer that will help us and equip us for life and to help us to win through in the spiritual battles that we're facing. So pray at length. Learn to fast and pray. You know, people say, oh, I haven't got time. No, I agree with Bill Hybels who says, I'm too busy not to pray. Too busy not to pray. You pray more, you'll have more energy. You pray more, you'll have more breakthrough. You spend time in prayer, it will transform your life and the lives of others. Hallelujah. And you'll win through in the spiritual battles that you're facing in your lives. A whole lot of prayer can solve a whole lot of problems. Now, if you don't believe in the power of prayer or God, then that means nothing to you. But the Bible attests to the power of prayer. Time and time and time again, people prayed and God acted quite miraculously. Praise God. The next thing is to pray in the spirit. This is praying in tongues. I don't want to spend too much time in this because it, it's very difficult if you haven't heard of it before, but God gives us a spiritual prayer language that we can use to pray. Pray in the spirit on all occasions. The Bible says, or Paul says in his letter, praying in the spirit is praying in tongues. Very clear. 1 Corinthians 14, if I pray in uh, tongues, my spirit is praying. So pray in the Spirit. I, I just can't emphasize that enough uh, to pr- you know, receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit and to spend time praying in tongues. If you don't know about that, then, then uh, I encourage you to do some studies on it and, and come into a place of understanding because what an amazing gift that God has given us in our spiritual, prayer, our spiritual lives and, and in the spiritual battles that we pray, that we're going through, we can pray through and see breakthrough, especially if you're praying in the Spirit. Wisdom can come, energy, power. Um, uh, 1 Corinthians 14 talks about when I pray in the Spirit, I'm edified spiritually. Jude 20, verse 20, praying in the Spirit, building yourself up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, praying in the Spirit. I could talk all day about that, but I'm just hitting you with some headlines because, friends, we've got to pray, pray, pray to win the spiritual battles. And the last thing, pray in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The devil has no answer for that. In the name of Jesus, that's authority. If you were commissioned to do something in the name of the king or the queen or some great authority, then you have all the authority and backing to do that. And God has given us authority to cast out demons in the name of Jesus, to take authority over spiritual situations in the name of Jesus, to pray for people for healing in the name of Jesus. Friends, don't diminish that name. Uphold it because it represents him. When you pray in his name, it's as if he's there. Acting, working, healing, restoring, delivering. Pray in the name of Jesus. Friends, I want to encourage you today with the short time that we've had together to renew your belief in the power of prayer. Or should I say it like this, that to renew your belief that at the end of our prayers is an all-powerful, all-loving God who hears and responds. Praise God. Friends, our struggle And you might be struggling today, but our struggle, our battle is not with people. Excuse me, not with people. We have another enemy. In fact, people are our enemies. So our focus is directed towards God in prayer. He is our answer. He is our help. He is our deliverance. And he is our hope. Friends, my challenge to you today is to spend more time in prayer this week, particularly with those things. You can go online and check out our um, website. I'm sure the message outline is there but pray first pray with somebody pray for the person it will change you and them pray persevering and don't give up don't give up in prayer pray in faith pray at length pray in the spirit and pray in the name of jesus but with whatever you do pray hallelujah let's pray father we thank you for the power of prayer 
Lord, to bring breakthrough, to overcome what the enemy might be doing because you respond to our praying. We pray, want to pray in the name of Jesus for deliverance for people who are watching now from mental anguish, from depression, from sickness and disease. Let them be healed now in the name of Jesus. Father, we just thank you that as we pray, we're communing with you. Lord, we're spending time with our answer. Who is you? And Father, I just pray that you'd help us to become people who are not against others, but know where our battle really lies and to utilize the weapons that you've given us, particularly prayer in breaking through in every circumstance. Father, I pray that you'd help us to do that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you. And if you want to make uh, contact with me, info at newlifeonline.org.au. If you want to give your heart to Jesus, then I encourage you to get on your knees and cry out to God and say, Jesus, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. I want to follow you with all my heart. As you do that, you'll never be the same. He will help you. He will restore you. He will bring healing. Sometimes it's quick, sometimes it's slow. But if you follow him, put your hand in his hand, he will bring about his will in your life. Praise God. He'll give you a sense of purpose and meaning and significance. He'll help you with everything you're facing. And not only that, he'll bring you into his family. Glory to God. So I encourage you to give your heart to Jesus today. Get involved with the local church, a good one that preaches Jesus and upholds the word of God and helps people to learn how to live victoriously in Christ. Well, God bless you. I hope you've enjoyed today's service and we're going to close out with a song. Uh, check us out next week, Home Church Online, 10 a.m., New Life Christian Centre, Christie's Beach, South Australia. God bless you. stood before creation eternity in your hand you spoke the earth into motion my soul now to stand you stood
What can I do? 